This is Ken Pyle with VOD TV. We're at the 2012 Broadband Community Summit with uh, Blair Levin of, uh, well, a lot of things, but <laughs> formerly the FCC, but also a national broadband plan, uh, I guess, father, if you will, and also uh, the latest venture, GigU. Can you give us right. gig.u? Can you give us a brief overview of that? Sure. Um, the National Broadband Plan explored the question of how does the United States retain technological leadership, and one of the things we looked at was, in order to retain that leadership, we need to make sure we have an ecosystem where we have uh, engineers who are designing, uh, building, operating, and innovating on top of the best networks in the world. As a country, we're not going to have the dis we're not going to have an absolute bandwidth advantage because, frankly, um, there's a lot of different reasons for that, but um, we don't have the density that other countries have. But we still need to have a critical mass of communities and a critical mass of users of the world's best networks, because that's how you develop the future. So we were exploring the question of how do we do that, and, and out of those discussions, the Google Fiber Initiative arose. And um, frankly, that was much better than anything we had in the plan. And 1,100 communities applied. And so some of us who had worked on the plan but were obsessed by the notion that we hadn't solved every problem looked at those 1,100 communities and said, that's really fantastic. It's not really a representation of consumer demand for a gigabit, but it is a representation of community desire for world-leading networks. How do we find the best communities in terms of economics, the easiest economics, but also the most innovative communities? who if they had a gigabit in their community would start to develop high bandwidth medicine, high bandwidth education, high bandwidth business services. And w when we did the analysis, the answer became clear. It was university towns. So I went to a number of university towns that had applied for Google and didn't get it. And we decided to together form a group called Gig.U. And our mission is very simple. Uh, accelerate the deployment of next generation networks and services by using university communities as test beds, and that's what we're doing. So it's not exactly the Internet 2.0 then. I mean, it, it no, goes Internet, beyond that. Well, it's different. Internet 2 and National Amber Rail and the research and education networks are, are partners in this mission. And the fact that they're located in all these communities, I think, is part of the reason why the economics is better and gives certain options that wouldn't be true in other places. But those are institutional networks, and they are only on campus. This is about getting retail offerings off campus that both complement and reinforce uh, the fantastic connectivity you have on campuses. But we think it'd be better if the doctors looking at the MRI at the hospital could look at those MRIs at home. We think it'd be better if the uh, students who are working on complex problems on campus where they have great connectivity have the ability to do it off campus. One of the things I'm curious about is 37 universities right now. Uh, we've been going around the country actually doing a lot of uh, filming of uh, communities where they've been putting out fiber to the home and, and some of the big beneficiaries have been really at the junior college level, maybe the you know yeah. state university level. Is there, uh, and for the same reasons you just suggested, right, you can get the you know, reduced windshield time, et cetera. Do you see extending what you're doing to those other universities that you know might not be the research universities, but they're very important? Uh, we're actually working on a project that I'm not going to talk about now, but we'll be talking about later in the month that involves, we, we wanted to focus on the big research mm -hmm. institutions with really the fastest networks in the world. But through the process that we ran, um, a request for information that led to over 60, led to about 60 responses, um, we, we were able to discern an opportunity for a lot more schools in particular situations that we think would be very, very valuable. Yeah, I mean, because I could in definitely envision the, uh, the opportunity to take some of the state and the regional fiber networks and use sure. those as part of an interconnection. Well, our, our view is, look, this is really about when does America get its next upgrade. Mm -hmm. A lot of the rest of the world is upgrading their networks. Uh, we really aren't. And in fact, for the first time since the beginning of the Internet, we don't have a national provider that has a public plan to build a better network than the best network currently available. Does there That's need to be fact. one does there need to be one provider though or can it be multiple? Oh, it can be multiple, yeah. but the fact that there's a small rural telco that by virtue of universal service is able to build a fiber to the home network, that's all great. I have no complaint about that. I'm just saying that's not really going to drive the kind of economic growth and innovation that I think our country needs. 
Well, and then getting to these networks in these, you know, research towns, university towns, what is, you know, I assume these are fiber to the home, fiber to the residence, fiber to the business, like gigabit type networks that are being planned? Well, the, the, the real idea uh, is for the communities to, um, in a partnership with service providers, try to figure out how we overcome the very difficult math Mm -hmm. of, uh, of, of enabling an upgrade or enabling a new network to be built. So we might see a number of models. Uh, okay. Yeah, we'll, you, we'll, we'll be talking over the next month or so about various different test beds and models. But, you know, each of our communities is approaching in a slightly different way. Some communities are doing it together. Some are um, doing it with local folks. Some are doing it with national folks. A lot of, I mean, this is all about test beds and different models. There is no one size fits all. I do think there's a common math, and I think that math is very difficult because in the current market, it's very, very difficult for any incumbent to justify an upgrade to a world-leading network. I mean, they already have a legacy system out there. They have a lot of capital to deploy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, they're very much in harvest mode. And having been a Wall Street analyst for many years, I, I both understand the math and I'm sympathetic to mm -hmm. the math. And I think it's part of Part of what I'll be talking about uh, tomorrow is how do we change that math? But it makes no sense whatsoever to blame the incumbents or to say that they're holding us back. Um, what does make sense is to try to figure out the math that they face and to see what are the other levers, and I believe there are a number of levers, that can help affect that and therefore drive uh, private investment into new networks or upgrades. Well, good. I look forward to uh, tracking this over the next couple of months, and I guess it'll be years. Uh, so yes, thank it'll you. definitely be years. This <laughs> is a long process. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much.